Hi, Lou here, and I'm going to talk about my game design philosophy or credo. And this is long enough that it's going to be two parts. Now, however much or little you're interested in my particular philosophy, this can help you formulate your own, as I will be talking about many issues involved in game design. While I didn't originally consciously adopt a philosophy of design, these are my observations of how I go about it. Each designer is going to have his or her own philosophy, consciously or unconsciously. And I kind of prefer consciously in the end. Some philosophies may be more successful or at least more in tune with the times than others. I have several mottos which all amount to the same thing. First, a designer knows he has achieved perfection, not when there is nothing left to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. Another form, which is about Japanese gardening, is your garden is not complete until there is nothing else that you can remove. And finally, we also have Albert Einstein, everything should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. So I try to keep it simple from the beginning, not throw a lot of things together and then cut things out to simplify. I prefer fairly simple to play games over fiddly rules complex or many pieces games. I avoid any deliberately added complexity. Uh, another way to, to express part of my philosophy is not puzzles, but games. Players, not mechanisms. Games are about people, not about the game systems. Now that is my particular point of view. Other people think that all games are math and it's all about the game systems. But those people are more satisfied with solitaire games perhaps than when games with other people involved because the other people can get in the way. In many Euro style tabletop games, the atmosphere, which is often wrongly called a theme, is tacked on and could be changed considerably and the players are entirely concerned with pure mechanics and much less with the other players. They don't attract me at all. I think games are about players. Further, I want players to think about strategies and about the opposition, not about mechanics and system. Another way to put this is, I prefer psychological games to system games. System games tend to be complex. Psychological games tend to be simpler. Now I have an intention to design. I design games. I don't throw things together to see what sticks. I try to conceive of ways to improve the game, not just try various things to see what happens. Although the latter worked well for Thomas Edison. You could say, though it's oversimplifying, that I use scientific method, which is not just trial and error. What about the audience? Well, you can't escape the audience. I design games for other people, not for myself. I enjoy watching others when they're enjoying my game more than I enjoy playing my games. And certainly that's true after the game is published. Pros design for other people. Amateurs can design for themselves because they don't have to sell it. I prefer opposed games. I don't do parallel competitions, which are puzzles disguised as games. Games require opposition. I don't go as far as Greg Kostikian, who said, a game without struggle is a game that's dead. But I'm getting toward that. Of course, even a co-op game can have struggle. You can have a game where you struggle against the system, but it has to be a pretty active system. In most cases, I design a model of some reality, which may be fictional. And the other cases are purely abstract games, which have no theme in the sense of decoration or atmosphere. In models, there must be lots of correspondence. What happens in the model must correspond to a considerable extent to what happens in the reality. Strategies must correspond to what happens in reality. What players think about must correspond to what happens in reality. Now, what about history? And keep in mind, I have a PhD in military history. An historical game can teach the players something about history. I am not of the what-if school of varying one factor or one decision to, quote, 
see what would have happened, unquote. Games are rarely sufficiently good models for that. And so much history depends on chance and on leadership decisions that from one game to the next, there's a lot more going on than just changing one factor. My two games tend to be at a high strategic level where it is practically impossible to model the factors that produce specific history, so it is rarely practical to use the what if query anyway. I model effects, not causes, though sometimes that can amount to the same thing. Modeling causes might work at a very low tactical level, but in general, at least in tabletop games, it's not going to happen. I am more interested in maneuver than combat. I'm going to quote Sir Winston Churchill and no doubt others. Battles are won by slaughter and maneuver. The greater the general, the more he contributes in maneuver, the less he demands in slaughter. I prefer the indirect approach rather than direct, and I can't go into what that is. Uh, I have in separate videos. Games that are all about combat, which tend to be very direct, can become mindless. There are exceptions, of course, especially some battles. After all, if you're in a battle, you're already at the point where you're using direct methods. But certainly many wars have been fought very directly as well. What about board versus card versus video? Well, games of maneuver require a board or equivalent in computer programming to depict maneuver. Card games naturally provide hidden information, but not maneuvering space. It's very hard to be a freelance video game designer. I have never tried. I have had a video game published, but it was originally a board game and just transferred to video. And that kind of thing you can do sometimes. I'm not much in sympathy with modern video games anyway. We have free to play, which twists things. Uh, things are about reward rather than consequence. We have the lunatic fringe of players, which is very offensive and so on. I don't like puzzles. I dislike parallel competitions, which are games disguised as puzzles. I don't like things that have always correct solutions. So most Euro games, which are tabletop, and most single player video games are of this type. I'm opposed to the lots of bits for a more complex puzzle school of design. Of course, games have few, if any, always correct solutions. If they have an always correct solution, that's a dominant strategy and that's a no-no in a game. I'm not interested in worker placement or deck building, rarely drafting. These mechanics are pretty divorced from reality. I don't make Hex and Counter ghetto war games, though I do like war games because they're highly interactive. And I want games that are highly interactive. In general, I'm interested in models and in strategy, not mechanisms. And I'll talk more about a lot more in part two. Thanks for listening.